Welcome to The Thriving Christian Artist, the podcast where we hope you connect with God to bust through the roadblocks that have held you back for years, create the work you love, and really live the life you know God created you to live as an artist in His kingdom. I'm Matt Tama, your host. Let's get started. Well, hey there, and welcome to the podcast today. Listen, we have had an incredible month here in April. It's been so awesome to see what God's done during our seven-day art challenge inside the Thriving Christian Artists Facebook group, the video series that I just finished, and today's a big day. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Today is the day once a year, all right, that we open up the Created to Thrive Experience Course. I know a lot of you have been waiting for it. Today's the day. Uh, The link uh, to become a part of that experience course is in the show notes right now, and so you can click on that and become a part of it. Listen, the experience course is something that uh, we actually developed last year. Uh, It's right when Created to Thrive, the the book came out. And um, the whole impetus behind that, you know, the whole purpose behind it was really to give people a seven-week journey with other artists that was really focused, all right, on overcoming roadblocks, on, you know, mindset, renewing your mind, aligning with your unique design. And so, you know, not only aligning with God's design for your life, but how has he designed you? You know, what's your purpose? You know, what's your specific design and assignment in the kingdom? How does that look? How do you begin to align your thoughts and your feelings and your emotions and your schedule and your everything that you're doing, all right, your resources around that? And how do you set a really strong foundation for thriving in your life and for everything else that God wants to do? Because without that, see, you can learn a whole bunch of marketing techniques. You can learn a whole bunch of art techniques, all this kind of stuff. But unless the foundation is set, you just end up being really, really frustrated in your life. How do you know that, Matt? Because that was me. (laughs) Everything that I write not only comes out of my journey, but it also comes out of of the journey of the thousands of artists that I've been able to help uh, throughout the years really move from struggling in their life as artists and people that love Jesus to to really thriving. And so today starts, uh, you know, the opening for that. It's only open uh, today, which is April 23rd, all the way through uh, midnight Eastern time on April the 27th, which is Saturday night. And uh, so we got five days uh, for you to register and when you do register and become a part of the program, uh, what's going to happen is you're going to get a number of resources, all right? Uh, the first one is you're going to get a copy of my Created to Thrive book, actually the physical book, uh, which is, you know, a, a great book. I hope you'll I hope you'll agree. <laughs> thousands and thousands of people have read that already. You're going to get the printed version as well as the e-version of that. In addition to that, you're going to get a printed version of the experience guide. Now, this is really special because it's a special workbook that we developed and you cannot buy it anywhere else. It's only available as, you know, a part of the experience course. And listen, it really allows you to not only read the book, but but take the information that's in the book and it pairs it with exercises and journaling opportunities and all this to be able to really fully, uh, you know, take in and process everything that God wants to do uh, through the course, all right? Not only that, so you're going to get the printed and e-version of that, all right? Not only that, you're going to get the full-length audio version of the book. You're going to get lifetime access to six video, teaching videos that I did, which again, expands on everything in the book and in the workbook. Plus, as a part of that, we're going to drop you into a private Facebook group just for people that are going through the experience course so that you can walk through the course together And in that, I'm going to do two live webinars uh, during that seven weeks to answer any questions that you have, go a little bit more in depth um, on any of the topics that people want to go in depth with uh, in regards to the the course. And then on top of that, we're just going to give you (laughs) some several other really, really great resources. Number one is the vision board worksheet, all right, which is going to just walk you through starting and developing, uh, creating your own vision board in line with who God's called you to be. I'm also going to give you my daily affirmations PDF, which is um, a wonderful resource that, again, helps you to develop affirmations based on God's word. Also, a great PDF I've developed called the 29 Habits of Thriving Artists, uh, which are 29 habits that not only I've practiced over the years, but some of the the best artists, uh, people that are really 
hitting on all cylinders in their life. These are habits that they practice as well. And then we're also going to throw in a couple of ebooks my how to make money with your art and also what is prophetic art. All of that becomes a part of your Created to Thrive Experience course experience. So I want to encourage you, go to the website that's linked right here in the show notes. You'll get all the information. You'll be able to see some um you know, some interviews with folks, uh, read some testimonies from folks that have gone through the experience course to let you know uh, what it's really about. And um, hopefully you'll make a decision to to become a part of that. But you got to do it by Saturday, April the 27th at midnight. All right. After that, it goes away. We'll close it for another year and we're not opening it again till next April. All right. Now, one of the questions just real quickly that I get a lot is, well, hey, Matt, what's the difference between the experience course and the mentoring program. All right. Well, the experience course, like I said, is a seven week course. We offer it one time a year. It's a compressed time frame, and it's really all about giving you the opportunity to set the foundation for your journey as an artist. All right. The mentoring program is an ongoing program. All right. It's a monthly subscription based program. It takes about 12 to 18 months to go through the whole mentoring program. Some people do it shorter. Some people, it takes longer. It's really on your time frame. But that's a month-to-month program where we have right now um, over 900 artists that are a part of that from all over the world and just about every creative medium. What I would say is this. The experience course is a great foundation to get you ready for the mentoring program. And so if you're considering, if you've heard stories, if you've been seeing any of the stories that are out there uh, online about people going through the mentoring program and having major transformation in their life, many of them started inside the experience course. And so I want to encourage you to to start there, click that link, get all the information and uh, become a part. I can't wait to see you uh, in that. I hope you'll, I hope you'll be a part of that. All right. Well, hey, I'm going to get out of the way, let you get onto the podcast today, but I love you very much. I hope this will be an opportunity that you take advantage of and that can really be a major blessing in your life. All right. Love you. Bye. Well, for those of you that uh, I've not met yet, uh, my name is Matt Tommy, and I'm from Asheville, North Carolina, and it's just an absolute pleasure uh, to be with y'all. We had a great time last night, great time this morning, and just encouraged about what God wants to do. Um, this afternoon. I'm one of those guys, I grew up in the church. Anybody else like that just grew up in the church? I grew up under a Steinway piano. And uh, my mom has been a choir director for about 100 years. And so I, I grew up singing, this is my story. Doom, doom, doom. This is my song. <laughs> you know, just the old, old, old stuff. And i uh, been in church as long as I can remember. And uh, as soon as I knew how to, I, I became, uh, I felt a call to ministry uh, in high school. And uh, just began the journey of, of following the Lord. And uh, like everybody, I've had my ups and downs and curves and all that, but I've been a worship pastor and musician and visual artist. Uh, now I'm 38, and so I guess professionally now almost 20 years. And um, get the opportunity every day to work with artists and creative people, which I can't tell you is the joy of my life to finally to be around people that get this idea of think, thinking outside the box and don't think it's weird, you know? <laughs> It's, it's good when you come into a, a, a room with everybody's like you. You're like, I'm not weird anymore, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I know it is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> you know, so, for so long in the church, I think so many artists, so many of us creative people, we kind of we kind of been in the back. Some of us felt marginalized. Some of us felt weird. But finally, the Lord, in, in this season right now, it just seems like there's so much focus uh, in his kingdom on the arts and on releasing the creativity uh, of his people. And that's what, that's what this weekend uh, is about. I wanted to take just a second and show you, uh, James, you got that pulled up. I wanted to show you a little bit of what I do. Um, I've been, like I said, a musician and a worship pastor most of my life. Um, But for 18 years, I've been a basket maker. And I go out in the woods and I harvest natural materials. So vines, honeysuckle, kudzu. Uh, I take tree bark off of trees, branches, all this kind of stuff. I take copper. And uh, so you can see some of the pieces. Just kind of flip through them. And uh, these are all out of tree bark that I harvest and, uh, and, uh, so, and, uh, I use hemp cord. I don't smoke it. Praise God. And, um, come on y'all come on now. <laughs> this is all out of birch bark yucca. There's the green stuff right there. That's a little bag. Um, this is copper right there. Those medallions there on the center. 
Um, I use all kind of different bark. And uh, so you can just see um, some of the things uh, that I'm doing there. People, a lot of times when you say you're a basket maker, they don't really know um, what you're talking about. But it's funny, this, uh, this part of my life, you can kill those now if you want to, but uh, that part of my life has kind of been this hidden thing for me. Most of, of my creative life is something that I always went to um, for, uh, I guess, therapy for myself. You know, when you get burned out on the church. About every, every September or October, I'd want to get, get in an RV and just say, baby, if we, I tell my wife, if we could just leave and go get a pile of kudzu and go make baskets on the road, everything would be all right. You know, <laughs> just leave it all behind. And the Lord, he would use my going out in the woods and all that sort of stuff as times to speak to me. And uh, it's always been a really integral part of my relationship with him, but never anything that, that people knew about with my creativity. Everybody knew me as a musician, as a worship pastor and that sort of thing, but nobody ever knew about the visual art side of me. And several years ago, I started a ministry called The Worship Studio. And uh, funny enough, we work mostly with visual artists, although we work with all types of artists, and um, really training them on how to engage the Holy Spirit in their creative process uh, in whatever that may be. And so it's funny as the Lord is, is still using uh, my music. I'm a you know, worship pastor and still do that every week. Um, I get several Sundays off a year to be able to do things like this, which is such an honor. Um, But most of the work that I'm doing with artists now uh, is not only in the Christian arena, but is also in secular arena as well. And so um, I'm getting a chance to speak to them and really just show them in a tangible way, even though they don't know who the Lord is, I'm getting to show them what the favor of God on an artist looks like. And um, so it's just a a whole lot of fun. So that's just a brief snippet um, about me. I also brought um, some of my books back here. This is a brand new book that I wrote uh, this last year called Unlocking the Heart of the Artist. It came out of a journey. I was trying to, to walk artists through what I'm going to walk you through today, um, which is this idea that um, none of us will achieve the fullness of who God's called us to be unless we move through the roadblocks that the enemy has set up for us. And I couldn't find anything that said what I wanted it to say, especially to artists. And so in Atlanta, um, this crazy story, we had a vision to birth the worship studio when I lived in Atlanta. About three months later, God gave me through a woman uh, an art gallery in Atlanta. We began to minister to artists, pull them together. And this book came out of that. It's actually a small group journey um, that you can have. So I'm looking for somebody that is a artisan, a craft person. Of it. What do you do? That's good. That's pretty close. So <laughs> there you go. So my gift. Thank you. So um, it's interesting. The book is, uh, is really going a lot of places now. And it's funny. You get these, these weird emails every now and then. You're like, people are like in Europe and in different places. And, you know, you get these emails from people. I'm sitting up here. It's, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, and I'm watching your YouTube video. And God's been speaking the same thing to me. It's, it's just amazing what God's waking up in, in creative people all over the world. And so um, it's, it's funny. That's just a, it's a good place to be in the kingdom right now. So. What I want to talk about today is, is exactly the topic um, that I wrote the book about, and it's really the, the passion of my heart. My life, just like I said, I grew up in the church, and I grew up uh, being a you know, successful worship pastor and recorded CDs and traveled and, and did all this stuff and uh, have, have been around people that have, have done that. And um, I've seen you know, people in the visual arts and drama and, and music, all these sort of things, they can be at the top of their game, but there be this underlying stuff inside of them that's going on. And for me, you know, all this talk about the arts in the church and releasing God's creativity and all that sort of stuff is really a moot point unless we talk about the restoration of the hearts of the creative ones. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, we, we creative people, we are really good at the show must go on, Right? tap dancing for Jesus, I call it, you know, no matter what's going on in our life, no matter how much pain we've been through, that sort of thing. When it comes time to do what we do, we can turn it on. And for me, that's what happened. I was, uh, you know, grew up in the church, started leading worship when I was probably 14 years old. Um, Just, you know, picture perfect life, it seemed. I grew up in, you know, with my mom leading worship and all that kind of thing. And about the time I started playing piano when I was five. So, I mean, I was a musical kid. And about the time most kids get 
an understanding of what God's call is on their life. You know that 11, 12, 13-year-old, 14, you start feeling, hmm, maybe this is what I want to be in life. The enemy set up a perfect storm in my life, and he may have done that a lot to you. I find that most artists have walked through something like this. And for me, it started with my piano teacher. I had gone to my piano teacher's house every, day, every week since I was five years old. And she was in her 90s when I started taking from her. I mean, she was old. God bless her. <laughs> Ms. McGee. And I would take piano and all that kind of stuff. And um, she ended up dying, and nobody told me. And I just stopped going to her. And it really was a major trauma in my heart. And I went to another piano teacher uh, just, you know, because my mom knew everybody, all the different musicians in town and that sort of thing. I went to another piano teacher, and they opened up the music. Now, I had been at this point playing Mozart, Chopin, all the different masters. They opened up the music, and literally, it was like I had never seen music before. And to that day, I don't read music now. I play totally by ear, and I've been a worship pastor playing by ear for years. At the same time that was going on, right around the same, uh, within a year, year and a half, um, my grandpa died which was just like, oh, you know, some grandparents you're not that close to. My grandpa, we went in the garden together, pulled okra together. I mean, you know, just a really incredible relationship. And he ended up passing away. And during the weekend that he passed away, which is major traumatic for me, um, began uh, a journey of being sexually abused by a family member of mine uh, most of my teenage years. But the show must go on because I'm in the church and I tap dance for Jesus, right? And so nobody ever knew about that. And it put me into this learning how to be religious and learning how to perform and learning how to keep it all up at the same time while dealing with major, major brokenness in my life. I know none of y'all ever dealt with that. Maybe a friend, right? I'm here for a friend, brother. (laughs) And so for me, what happened was this guy, this young guy, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 years old that feels a call to ministry, this leading worship, this being creative, this doing all these things, okay, getting awards. I eventually went to college, all this sort of stuff. At the same time, I was being sexually abused by a family member. Then I was bound by pornography. I started living this double lifestyle. The internet came out. I found out what internet chat rooms were. And I thought, well, I'll just get married because that'll, be, that'll fix it. <laughs> and it didn't fix it. And so I was in ministry and uh, married and was on the Internet on my days off, um, looking at pornography, um, meeting people for anonymous sexual encounters while I was in ministry. Now, you've got to keep in mind, this is at a time when I was going to Africa, hundreds of people in worship conferences, CD produced. I mean, I was at the height of, of my game. What I, and yet major, major brokenness inside. But I can't tell anybody because artists don't tell anybody, right? We got to keep it all up, keep the, keep the facade going. Major brokenness. And so for me, you know, praise God, through some friends and through a long, long, <laughs> almost 10 years now of walking through recovery, the Lord began to heal my heart and began to move me into a place of wholeness. We're all walking in that, right? But I find that the enemy has set up roadblocks and perfect storms, if you will, for for most creative people. And most of the church refuses to deal with it. Because for a man to stand up and say that he has dealt with same-sex struggling issues, all the different things that I'm telling you, in in a regular church on a Sunday morning, most people would be horrified. Much less can't even believe that you said it. See, we don't want to deal with the hard issues a lot of times. And so I praise God for churches like this and opportunities like this to share my story and to encourage you that you don't have to stay in what the enemy may have set up for you. Just like the enemy tried to set something up for you, God set something up for you before the very foundation of the earth. And so for me to talk about the uh, release of the arts and the restoration of creativity to the church is disingenuous unless we talk about the hearts of the artist. Because otherwise, we have this movement of immensely talented, creative, egotistical maniacs who can't walk with each other in relationship, who think that they're the best one, who think that their song's the one that ought to be sung, who thinks that they're the one that should be... And so it's these issues that I really hold my heart. And that's, that's, uh, I guess, kind of the position that 
that I, ta- I talk from. So, you know, this movement, three years ago, God told me in a vision, he said, you're a father to artists, and I'm calling you to raise up an army of artists to reveal my glory in the earth. And this movement that he's raising up, God's raising up, of artists is not just some group of talented people, but it's, it's not raising up orphans, people that can know how to do it by themselves, who are all about self-sufficiency, who are all about, let me do it my way, on my terms, on my timeline, the way I want to do it. But he's raising up sons and daughters. He's raising up people that can rightly relate to the Father, rightly relate to the authority in their life, rightly relate in a healthy way to the community that they're set in so that when he gets ready to launch us, we're not these lone rangers out there just doing our thing, but we're really ready to march as an army. You know, the thing that I'm looking for, and I think the Lord is looking for, is kingdom influence, culture-shaping kingdom influence. Not in some religious, you know, moral majority kind of way where we get in somewhere and try to take over some power grab. I'm talking about authentic relationship, real influence, this birthed out of relationship, this birthed out of love from immensely talented people, skilled people, anointed artists who are engaging the Holy Spirit in everything that they do and God being able to bring them to places of influence. But if we do that outside this healthy heart place, if we do this in this kind of orphan mentality, it's just a setup for destruction. Do you hear me? And so that's what, um, that's what I really want to deal with a lot today. You know, that I guess the interesting thing for us as artists is that we are by nature sensing and feeling beings, right? <laughs> I mean, the, the very things that God gave us to be able to um, know his presence, to be able to sense and see the things in the spirit are the very gifts and things that the enemy will take and try to twist in us, right? So I'm sensitive. So instead of being able to be sensitive to the spirit, I'm sensitive when somebody says something to me or they didn't like my painting or can you believe? I mean, I used to, I used to hate it when, pe- you know, a, a senior pastor, I can't tell you how many senior pastors I've made mad in my life being immature. You know, they would come up to me and say, oh, brother, incredible song you just wrote. You know, um, we're going to only do uh, four songs this week instead of five because we've got communion, you know, this week. And so we need to be mindful of the time. Well, they don't like my song. I can't. They're quenching the spirit. <laughs> just, <laughs> I know y'all have never heard of a musician that can be like that. But <laughs> I mean, you know, there's this immaturity thing. This, again, the things that God gave me to be able to sense and know his spirit in an immature way, in an unredeemed way, the enemy wants to take and twist. And, uh, and he loves for us to stay uh, in that place. Well, hey, there's Matt. And you know, one of the things that I found over the years in working with artists is that real lasting change in our life happens best in the context of supportive Christian community. And that's why I wanted to take this opportunity just to take a second and invite you to be a part of my online community called the Thriving Christian Artists Facebook Group. Listen, this group is absolutely free and over the years has actually grown to thousands and thousands of artists in just about every creative medium from countries all over the world. You know, the cool thing is that it's become a real place of encouragement and life for artists, just like you and me, who want to share their work, share their life, (laughs) connect with other artists, and really pursue everything God has for us as artists in his kingdom. Now, listen, to join, all you have to do is just click the link in the show notes here and answer a couple of questions just to let us know that you're a real person, and bam, you're in, okay? So, listen, I can't wait to connect with you inside of my Thriving Christian Artist Facebook group. Do it now, and we'll see you there very soon. All right, bye. His offering, but did not respect Cain and his offering. Now, evidently, the Lord had set up some conditions for the offering. One did it the way he said he'd do it. One, one did not, okay? And so... Uh, Cain was very uh, angry and his countenance fell. I can just, I, he had to be a musician, right? You could just see, oh, I just can't believe this. I can't believe God wouldn't like me. Can you, can you believe he did this? I know, I know. He just doesn't know who I am. Does he know how hard I worked getting all this stuff out of the field? I mean, I know y'all never seen creative people like that. Okay. And so the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. Now Cain talked with his brother Abel, and it came to pass that when they were in the field, Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. And then the Lord said to Cain, where is, your, where is Abel, your brother? He said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? 
And he said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened up its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. Listen to this. When you till the ground, you shall no longer, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. A fugitive and a vagabond you shall be on the earth. And Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Surely you have driven me out this day from the face of the ground. And I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond on the earth. And it will happen that anyone who finds me will kill me. And so he goes on. I read that passage. And I was like, that sounds like a lot of artists that I know. A lot of creative people I know. Dealing with jealousy and rage and envy. What about that whole thing? You ever heard of being a starving artist? See, that's a curse. The more, how many artists that you know, the, more they, the harder they work, the less they get. Can't make a living at what they're doing. Can't make any money at it. What does that say? The, the more you till the ground, what? It's not going to produce. I used to have guys in my bands over the years, you know, leading a church band. You have different volunteers that come in. I had a guy one time, percussion player, awesome percussion, you know, just like, he was awesome. And uh, he would be there like three or four months. And then for about two months, you'd be like, where's so-and-so? He'd just disappear. And then about two or three months later, he'd come back, hey, man, what's going on? I'm like, dude, where you been? He's like, oh, I just, you know, I went to Florida and then I went, just kind of couldn't keep a job, just kind of, what? Being a vagabond, just kind of roaming, no commitment. See, people think, oh, that's just artists. <laughs> artists aren't committing. No, they're kind of flighty. <laughs> they don't have any responsibility. That sounds just like what Cain was dealing with, right? He'd be a vagabond. He'd, he'd wander. So I started, I started saying, hmm. Now, also a lot of artists that I know, they're away from the Lord. And what was one of the curses that happened? That he was banished, what, from the presence of the Lord. And I started saying, this sounds like a profile of so many artists. Well, interestingly, when I went down in Scripture, and you can look at that later on, it gives the genealogy, what happened after Cain and Abel and that sort of thing. Five generations after them, Cain that messed it up. Guess who was birthed out of Cain's line? Jubal and Tubal Cain. Jubal, it says, was the father of all musicians. And Tubal Cain, it says, was the father of all who worked with iron and metal, all the, all the craftsmen. And it was so neat to me that Cain is the great, 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 great grandfather of all creative people. But left unredeemed, we end up with that same inheritance that he had. But, but God so loved the world. <laughs> even through Christ, see, even back then, in the fifth generation, what is five? Favor, grace. In that fifth generation, God released two, not one. He released a double portion blessing through Jubal and Tubal Cain to restore arts and restore artists and restore creativity. And the next artist that we see in the Bible is Bezalel, which is this incredible story of, of a creative, anointed, skilled uh, artist building the tabernacle. And so that's why I want you to understand that you know, your natural nature, the natural way that you may feel dealing with a lot of these emotional issues and that sort of thing, it probably is your natural. It is your natural sin nature. It's the way that we end up a lot of times when we leave ourselves um, unredeemed. And so what I'm all about is trying to help people. How do we take what God's given us and see it redeemed and then see it uh, flourish uh, in the kingdom? And so that's what I want to, I want to get into today. Now, the next scripture I wanted you to turn to is Matthew 3, verse number 13. And this is talking about the baptism of Jesus. Now, remember I talked about this whole thing is not a movement of, of orphans, of just artists trying to do it on their own, but it's really a movement of sons and daughters. And when the enemy comes to attack you, he's not just attacking you as an artist. He's not just attacking you as a talented person or as a musician or whatever. He's attacking you just like he attacked Jesus. See, he didn't attack Jesus as just a good teacher or whatever. He attacked his position as the son. And so I want to read this to you and and just show you a few things. uh, Matthew 3, verse 13, it says, Then Jesus came from Galilee 
the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. Why do you come to me? Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. And then John consented. And as soon as Jesus was baptized, he came up out of the water. And that, at that moment, heaven was open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and aligning to him or on him. And a voice said from heaven, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Now, that's pretty awesome, right? God is opening up the sky. Ta-da, this is my son. I mean, did he have an English accent? That's what I don't know. All the people in the movies are, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. You know, it's, <laughs> I don't know. But <laughs> this voice comes down and affirms Jesus' position as a son. The creator is affirming the position. And so what happens to him is the same thing that happens to us. Once you begin to understand who you are as a son, as a daughter in the kingdom, then immediately the enemy wants to come and try to bring lies and try to bring deceit and try to bring that perfect storm, just like he did in my life. He wants to try to bring that perfect setup in which to take you out. And so let's read what happened to Jesus. He said, then immediately after this, then Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came to him and said, if you are the what? The son of God, then tell these stones to become bread. And Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes out of the mouth of God. So then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. And he said, if you are the what? Son of God. He said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. And Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. And again, <clears throat> verse 8, the devil took him to a high, very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All of this I will give to you, he said, if you will do what? Bow down and worship me. And Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And then finally it says, then the devil left him and the angel came and attended to him. See, a lot of times we think that this is just about, you know, Jesus combating the enemy with the word and we need to use the word all that. But it's really about Jesus being able to stand in the authority that he had as a son. Because that was the thing. See, if the enemy can sow enough doubt in your mind that you're on your own, nobody likes you, nobody likes your creativity, you're not good enough, you're not this enough, you're not that enough, and, you, and, and you know, how are you going to make money and you better just go get a real job and blah, 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 all this stuff. If he can sow enough doubt into you, he knows that he can eventually get you off course. He can shift your focus just enough to get you off. And you may, you may shift a little focus right now, and it may not seem like a big deal, but when you get out finally to where your destiny is, you're way, way, way off course. I remember the first time I got to minister with, uh, with Brian Whalen. It was in uh, Chatsworth, Georgia last year. And um, I, we were staying at this hotel, and um, they had to move us to another hotel because the one we were supposed to stay at had bed bugs. That's why we were saying, don't joke about that last night. Cause it was, <laughs> and uh, we got there, and the next, next morning I'm getting up. You know, I'm by myself. The room is dark, all this kind of stuff. And I'm just kind of like, oh, my. You know how you just sleep too hard and you got a headache in them? I'm just like, oh, gosh. And I go over there, and I'm trying to get my toothpaste and everything. I don't have my glasses on yet. I'm just trying to get, you know, brush my teeth. And I put the toothpaste on my toothbrush, and I pull it up to my mouth. And I'm like, what? I said, Lord, that's Neosporin. I said, <laughs> I had put Neosporin on my toothbrush. And I said, that's just like the enemy. It's like, it looks the same, feels the same, but it's like, that is what he wants. It just shift our focus just a little bit. <laughs> That'd have been a mouthful of nasty, would I do? But... Hey, thanks so much for spending a few minutes with me today on the podcast. Listen, I hope it's been a huge encouragement to you on your journey as an artist. Hey, also, before you leave, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of the other episodes of the Thriving Christian Artist Podcast. And also, be sure to connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, or at my website, which is matttommymentoring.com. Until next time, remember... You were created to thrive. Bye-bye.